So there's a word in the dictionary called mathophobia, which is the fear, stress and anxiety that you face when you study math. In fact, scientists looked at MRI scans of young students solving math papers and were aghast to find the reaction to numbers as though they were snakes or spiders. But the good news is that years of research has proven that there is indeed no math gene or no math brain. And anyone can learn and be good at math even at the highest levels. So let's delve deep into what these scientific techniques tell us about how to study math and how to ace that math exam. So hey, this is Chetna and you're watching Chet Chat and this is Chet Chat's masterclass on how to study math and how to get that 100% in your math exam. But before we get to those scientific techniques, I want to give a shout out to Vaishali Khernar who in our previous video said that she used some of our techniques to learn English and she said that the results were mind blowing. And if you want a shout out in any of our videos, press the subscribe button and the bell icon right next to it and put a comment in the comment section with the hashtag Chet Chatters and give us a thumbs up if you like our work. Now in today's video, I will give you five scientifically researched techniques to ace your math exam including one technique to use during the examination and I'm also going to give you three bonus tips so stay tuned right till the end and I can assure you that by the end of this video you're going to feel less afraid and more motivated to study math. Technique number one is called flashlight modes. In her book, A Mind for Numbers, Barbara Oakley says that imagine a flashlight. It has two modes. One is the focused mode. This is when you concentrate on a given set of information. This is very important for math problem solving and also to practice concepts that you're already familiar with. The second mode is called the diffused mode. This is the big picture mode. This is what happens when you relax your mind a little and let it wander a bit. This is also very essential for math, especially if you want to gain new insights into problems that you're already struggling with or you want to understand something new. Let's take an example. Two errors in the sentence are obvious because they are spelling errors and you've just used the focused approach. But what about the third error? Now the third error is that the statement is untrue. There are in fact only two errors in the statement. But this you will come to only when you use the diffuse mode. So if somebody tells you that all you need to do is practice, practice, practice from morning to evening, then tell them that you're not going to be adequately utilizing your diffuse mode. So Barbara Oakley goes on to say that in order to learn math, we need to balance three modes. The focus mode, the diffuse mode and sleep mode. She says, as much as practice and work is important for us to progress in math, so is sleep to increase the power of our brain. Technique number two is called visualization. Stanford researcher and math professor Joe Bowler looked at MRI scans of young students studying math. And she found that two out of the five pathways that were engaged were visual. And she believes that finger perception and visual support is really very important for us to help in learning math. Let's take an example. A group of students was given these shapes and asked how they believed the shapes were growing. She got very different answers, extremely creative ways of seeing the growth. And if you move the squares around and rearrange the shapes, you will find that it actually grows like a square. And that is why this is the solution. Seeing this formation visually solidifies your understanding. So basically, whenever you're solving a math problem, draw a diagram, a table or a chart whenever possible, even if the examiner has not asked for it and you'll be able to solve that problem much better. Technique number three is called deep practice. Most people believe that math ability is about speed and accuracy and they will tell you to do a hundred sums a day to get practice. But math is problem solving 
and real problem solving is about struggling, trying different methods, failing and trying again. And if you really don't get it, get up from there, leave, go elsewhere, come back another time, try a different method and you're going to find this much easier. This is the concept of deep practice. Einstein had once said, it's not that I'm so smart, it's just that I stay with the problem longer. And to gain a deeper understanding into this concept of deep practice, we got in touch with math specialist and founder of Scalar Learning, Josefa Kapadia, who shares his thoughts on deep practice all the way from the US. Deep practice is a term that was created by the author Daniel Coyle, who is the author of The Talent Code, a book which documents people who've achieved greatness in a number of areas of life. Deep practice is all about three key steps of making mistakes, evaluating mistakes, and then trying again. You want to try the homework on your own, make mistakes, go through the process of finding those mistakes, and then fixing them. It is so critical for the learning process, especially in math. Technique number four are your exam strategies and I'm actually going to give you three little strategies within this overall technique of exam strategies. One is to read the most difficult problem first and then get on to the easy problems and start solving them. Now many people will tell you to first solve the most easy problems but there's a very good reason why skimming over the toughest problem before you start solving the easy problems is a good idea because as you're solving those easy problems your subconscious mind is working on that tough problem at the end of it when you get to that tough problem it's a lot easier for your brain to sort that out the second tip is to read each question twice and to write down every bit of information that's given in the question in the answer first of all and then try to do as many steps as you can even if you don't know the answer even if you don't know how to solve it maybe draw a diagram or a chart or try to do a few steps you'll get some points for this at least and the third tip here is that while revising the paper take a different sequence because this helps the brain spot careless mistakes Overall, don't be in a rush and don't worry if someone else finishes the paper before you. Technique number five is called apply math to the real world. So many times when we are struggling with math, we wonder why do we have to do all this complicated stuff? We're never going to use it anyway. So understanding the real world applications of what we are studying is one of the best ways to make this easier to understand. So let's take an example. The regression effect states that if a variable produces an unlikely outcome, the next outcome will be closer to the mean. Now this explains why an author's second novel is sometimes not as good as his first breakout success and why sometimes children of extremely tall parents may be average in height and also children of extremely short parents may sometimes be closer to the mean. And now for the bonus tips. But before I get to the bonus tips, I want each one of you to put a comment in the comment section right under this video and tell me which of these five strategies you tried out and it worked for you. And if there's any other strategy that you've used in the past and you want to share that with us, please put that as well down in the comment section. And now for the bonus tips. Tip number one, I'm going to give you some useful websites or apps that you can use for your step by step problem solving. The first one is Wolfram Alpha. Now this is a great website when it comes to getting your answers. But when you want to look at each step by step detail, you might have to pay for it and go for the pro version. But there's another website called Symbol Lab where it's slightly more difficult to enter each one of those terms of the equation, but they allow you to see the step by step process free of cost. But a word of caution out here. Now, like I said, math is about problem solving, it's about struggling, it's about trying different techniques. So please make sure that you've done all that struggle yourself before resorting to the website and seeing the answers right there. Of course, there may be many other apps or websites that you find useful and you like. How about you share those with us as well in the comment section under the video. Bonus tip number two is to revise all the questions that you got wrong, whether it was on your test or a midterm or any other assignment that you submitted. Check all those questions that you made mistakes in right before an exam. 
and bonus tip number three is to circle those questions in the book that you found difficult even if you were able to solve it but if you struggled with that question circle the, the question so when you're revising for the exam you know which one to go back to and try one more time and before we end this video remember on my community tab i had asked each one of you to give me your strategies that help you ace your math exam and it was so much fun to read all of your strategies it was so hard to decide which one was the best but my favorite was from shubham gelot and i'm putting that right here for all of you to see and before we conclude i want to share a quote from stephen hawking no matter how difficult life may seem there is always something that we can pick up and succeed at so i sincerely hope that i've helped you succeed in math and thank you so much for watching right till the end press the subscribe button and the bell icon right next to it and give us a thumbs up if you like our work and happy watching